Armstrong children were off to see Smarty's world famous circus. Smarty is an elephant with a wonderful group of performers. Isn't this exciting? I've heard such a lot about this circus. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, the Rainbow Theatre, home of the Mug Wap Puppets, presents Smarties Give a Name Marionette Puppet Circus. And now, the Grand Parade with Smarty and the King and Queen of Fairy Story Land. And all of the Give a Name Performing Marionette Puppet. Psycho. Elephant. 
body long the circuit and saved up all her peanuts to buy her own marionette puppet circus. As all children know, elephants can talk. So, Smarty wants you to give a name to all of the performing marionette puppets. So, let's pretend. In the center ring, Watch the ball as the given name juggler tosses it from foot to hand to his nose. I would name this beautiful puppet Jojo the Juggler. The story of Jojo, I imagine, is that Jojo always loved to juggle. Even when he was a little boy, his daddy would throw him high in the air and Jojo would just laugh and laugh. His first juggling feat was the time he threw snowballs with his friends. Jojo wanted to throw several snowballs at once. So, he would hold two snowballs in one hand while he threw one with the other hand. All through school, Jojo's friends encouraged him to juggle because they loved to watch him. Watch this! Isn't he clever? Juggling with his feet. Jojo came to juggle baseballs, beanbags, bananas, apples, anything that he could find. And the day that the circus came to town was the day Jojo knew that he really wanted to be a juggling clown. And what name did you give a juggler? Look, he sticks for legs. Give a name to the still walker. Well, shall we call him Bobo? Oh, look at him. Isn't he marvelous? I'm going to tell you how Bobo became a stilt walker. Of all the clowns in the circus, Bobo is the best liked because he's so friendly with everyone that works in the circus. But one thing Bobo was not happy about was a certain little poodle dog named Fifi. Well, Fifi, unfortunately, was very jealous of Bobo because he had so many friends. So, when no one was looking, Fifi tried to nip at Bobo's ankles. At first, Bobo would tell Fifi to stop, but she would not listen. Fifi got worse and worse. And one day, she even chased Bobo right into the middle of his circus act. Can you imagine? But one day, the ringmaster called a meeting with Bobo to talk about the Fifi problem. What should be done? And Bobo thought about it for a long time. And then he said that it might help, and even be funny, if he could walk on stilts to get up and away from that Fifi. Next day, Bobo appeared in the center ring on stilts. And can you imagine Fifi's surprise? Ah, oh, look at this. He's really balancing. First one leg.
Will he try the other? Yes, he is. There he goes. Can't you just see Fifi jumping and leaping to try and reach Bobo's ankles? Well, naturally, after a short time, Fifi grew tired of this, and she began to leave Bobo alone. And soon Fifi began to have more friends again. And Bobo became so good on the stilts that he kept them in his act. Isn't he just great? And doesn't he look as if he enjoys it? Keep it up, Bobo. There he goes. Thank you, Duke Walker. A kiss. Give a name to the monkey on the trick bicycle who sends his bananas home to his mother. I'm going to call this little monkey Miracle. Would you like to guess why he's called Miracle? Yes, partly it is a miracle that he can balance on a two-wheeler. But also, there's a story about this little monkey. You see, when he was a very young monkey, he lived in the zoo. But one night, he escaped to see the world. And he was gone for a very long time. But once he had seen all that he wanted to see, he found his way home again. Wasn't he clever? Because he was so clever, he was named Miracle. And knowing how much Miracle loved to travel to see the world, the monkey keeper sent Miracle to be in the traveling circus. He does look so happy, don't you think? Can you do that on your two-wheeler? That monkey can really ride. And now, that terrific trotting duo, the given name, Horse Ballet. Well, this might just be Rudolph the Red Horse. His circus friends call him Rudy for short. When he was a young pony, he was dearly loved by his owners, two boys called Andrew and Michael. They taught Rudolph all his tricks. Can you imagine? That would take a lot of patience and time, I'm sure. The boys rode Rudy every day, and when they weren't riding him, they were teaching him. Oh my! Look at that! He really is very clever, isn't he? Rudy was becoming a little too old to be ridden every day, and Andrew and Michael felt that he would still be able to do his tricks for many years if he were well-loved and cared for. So when they heard about Smarty's world-famous circus, they were so happy, because this way, every little boy and girl would be able to watch the wonderful Rudy perform. I think he's waving, don't you? Wonder how they taught him that. And a bow, too. Clever Rudy. Oh, look at the mule. I think we should call him Pokey. Isn't he beautiful? Look at what he can do. Well, Pokey learned many of his tricks in Mexico, where he was in a small circus. But Pokey was stubborn and slow. And rather than running out into the ring and doing his act, 
Pokey would wander out slowly and wander about just looking up into the audience. And he would only perform when he felt like it. A small circus in Mexico finally asked Pokey to leave because he didn't do what he was told to do. What's he doing now? I think that's a handstand, Pokey. Well done. Well, one day Pokey heard that Smarty's world famous circus was in a town not far from where he was. So Pokey set out to town as quickly as he could. Actually, Pokey was moving faster than he'd imagined he could. And he trotted straight up to Smarty and asked him if he could join his circus. Well, imagine, Smarty said, I've heard of you, Pokey, and I know that you're a good circus mule. But I also know that you're sometimes very uncooperative, Pokey. Well, Pokey said, yes, I have been. But if I'm given another chance, I will do better. And do you know, Smarty believed him, and he welcomed him to join his circus. And from then on, Pokey has always, well, almost always, done what he is told. And he trots right out into the center ring and tries his best with all of his heart. And Pokey is very, very happy. Oh, there's another handstand. Pokey must be pleased with himself. And the splits. Good for you, Pokey. He just doesn't want to stop, does he? Come on, Pokey, time to go. Waiting high above the circus floor. Astounding aerial exploits by the give a name trapeze artist. Oh look, now this must be Mr. McGillicutty. He's on his trapeze. Can you imagine that he once won an Olympic medal? And I'll bet you can guess how he started out with his trapeze. Yes, it was on the jungle gym in his schoolyard. Of course, it then took him many hours and years of practice to get to the Olympics. After winning his medal, Mr. McGillicutty started to teach children everything that he had learned and how he loved working with those children. But one thing was still missing from his life. That was the thrill and the excitement of performing for people. So, as you can see today, Mr. McGillicuddy has two jobs. He performs for children and their parents in the circus, and he teaches children. His students often come and see him in the circus, hoping that someday they will do as well. Wouldn't you like him to be your teacher? What a lovely smile he has. He must enjoy being on the trapeze, don't you think?
Let hear it for the trapeze I give. It's time to give a name to the marionette on the unicycle. Oh, look at that. Now this, I'd say, is Mr. Sam. When he was a little boy, his parents took him to see a parade. And his favorite clown in the parade was the one on the unicycle. And immediately Sam became determined to learn to ride one too. And he started saving his money to buy himself a unicycle. As he looked at the unicycles in the shop, he would imagine himself riding splendidly and the children laughing as he passed by. Ah, now he's doing his most difficult act. He's riding up the teeter-totter. Come on, Mr. Sam. You can do it. Steady up. Up you go. He did it. Back down again. Well done, Mr. Sam. And only one wheel. And now, in the center ring, give a name to that agile acrobat. Oh, my goodness. Now, this must be Mr. Astronomical. He's the newest member of the circus. And for many years, he was an astronaut, where he zoomed to the moon and back. Ah, terrific. Bounds. And now, he shows off on the ball. When Mr. Astronomical finished being an astronaut, he was able to do what he'd always wanted to do, perform in a circus. He learned many new tricks, like this fantastic handstand. Let's enjoy the creative canine, the given name, performing Oh, we must call her Fifi. Now, dear little Fifi is such a show-off. Just look at her. Fifi has been doing tricks and performing since the moment she was born. Uh-oh, wag, wag. Right from the word go, she would tease her puppy brothers and sisters terribly and always got lots of her mother's attention. And when the children came to see the new puppies, they all wanted to take Fifi home. The lady who owned the puppies knew that for Fifi to be happy, she needed to have lots and lots of attention. What Fifi needed was to be in a big circus show. What a handstand and a wag, too. And now, that cunning Canine will jump through the hoop of fire. This is Fifi's most daring trick. There she goes. And that was the darling canine. Get ready to laugh. Here comes that funny fellow, the given name, Clown. Now look at him. That's very difficult to do, I would imagine. Well, I'm going to call this clown Mr. Bounce. He's so clever that he can balance on just about anything. There he goes. As a young boy, his pogo stick was one of his favorite toys. Oh, he could balance on fences and along rock walls. But imagine his mother's amazement. One day she looked out of her kitchen window to 
to see her young boy walking very proudly along her clothesline. His perfect balance has always been a thing of great wonderment. He really loves to bounce, doesn't he? And now, the star of the show, the ponderous Taki Derm Swati. girls and boys, I imagine that once upon a time, Smarty was a lifeless toy, and that she was brought to life by the toy maker, who carved her from a special, and I think magic, piece of wood. After Smarty came to life, she met with many adventures. Imagine her discovering the world of living creatures. I wonder how many children she met along the way, and how many good friends she made. Somewhere along the way, perhaps, Smarty saw marionette puppets performing and became enchanted with how clever they were. Perhaps it was then that Smarty realized that she herself was a marionette who had come to life. And now, up on the block. What is Smarty doing now? And now, come along with Smarty as she counts her peanuts from one to ten. Smarty has probably had a lot of practice at counting her peanuts. There she goes. One. Two. Three. Five. Six. Well done, Smarty. Seven. Yes, it's seven, Smarty. That's all right. Eight. I think she's getting a little bit tired, don't you? Nine. Now for the last one. Come on, Smarty. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Number ten. Well done, Smarty. Aren't we lucky that a kind toy maker chose with care a special piece of wood to make Smarty? so that she would be able to come to life and show us the special magic of all these marionettes. And now that I have told you some stories about these marionettes, perhaps you would like to be the storyteller. Can you think up wonderful stories for each puppet? There must be so many more possibilities. 
And I wonder who is your favorite? The clown on stilts? The trapeze artist? Or the monkey?